So I'm out here, boys, trying to uh, show you video. My gear is acting up here. It's the CC65. Can you see on the trace there? So I've got nothing. I had moments where I had absolutely nothing on the screen. And then it would return to normal. Well, clearly, there was an issue at the, uh, the wiring where it actually goes through the housing here. So I had my probe just gently pushed in there to keep continuity on the center conductor. And where the issue is, of course, is uh, where the wire comes through the feed through here because the strain relief is almost non-existent. So that's the, the core and the shield. And the issue is right here. So I guess I'll strip it back. Hopefully we'll have a good section here. And uh, re-solder it to the board here. So it looks like the board is held in by uh, just the single Phillips screw there, boys, in the center of the board, I believe. And it looks like there's uh, two ribbon connectors that go on in the board. So the two ribbon uh, connectors disconnected there, boys. As I said, uh, mark the one ribbon there, so it goes back on to this one. You don't mix them up. I think the likelihood of that is slightly none. Uh, but then, in fact, it is just the one little partially out. See the captive little screw there. And I think the board will lift. It does, indeed. So it's just the one little screw. It's not captive, the screw. Don't lose that wee bastard. <laughs> There we go. Not pretty boys, but done. So that's the core. You can see that on the board there's the little plus sign. So there's the wiring extracted. So you can see the original factory installation there, boys, the core and the shield. We've just slipped a wee bit of heat shrink over the, uh, the shield. I will do the Both same. sides of the board, soldered back best I could. Heat shrunk on the other side. Tricky, very, very tiny wires put any kind of force on them or nick them at all and they're going to break. I had to do it a couple of times over to be honest. But it's okay. Satisfactory I think. So just watch the contacts here on this wee bugger of a switch here boys because uh, they can fall out and uh, leaves you wondering how you orient them. Make sure when you uh, flip the board around uh, you've got your your uh, zeroing switch in place, the knob to the switch just kind of snaps in place and make sure that the LEDs actually line up with the uh, cutouts in the uh, in the housing here, right here. Let's take note of the uh, routing for the uh, ribbon cables there. And as I said, be wise to mark them so you don't mix them up. It's unlikely you will, but it's possible, I suppose. Uh, the locks, of course, are back in place. Uh, there's the little central screw that keeps the board. This is basically an indexing post. And make sure that your two LEDs set correctly. Otherwise, if you struggle with them, you're guaranteed to knock the uh, contacts off the switch. I think the switch is okay. Feels feels normal, so that's a good thing. 
Um, I doubled up the heat shrink here. The only thing is it might be a wee bit difficult. I've doubled up the heat shrink to try and give it a wee bit more strain relief from the original. But I don't know if that's going to cause a growth with housing now. Anyway, we'll close it up and see how it sits. So I think that's fairly close to the original. Hope so anyway. So, reassembled. The gap looks quite consistent there. So you can see there's what we buy extra strain relief on there now. Hopefully that goes some way to solving the issue. Uh, hand tech could have done a wee bit better on the strain relief there. Does it work? LEDs on. It's making a little buzzing sound that it normally does, humming sound. Switch seems to be normal. Okay boys, so there's the test rig, it's just a blower fan. And um, I've got a little battery there, 12 volt battery for a power supply. So we'll uh, hook it up, check to see what it actually draws. And uh, we'll cross check it with the uh, clamp on that mirror. So that's to be expected. Uh, just going by the graticules there, it looks like the max should be about 15 amps, which it is. Let me change that to measure. Mean. Okay, so about 4.17, so about 4.4, so that's not too bad, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I've relabeled the, uh, the switch there, um, hand tech could do us all a favor and actually make the detent on this a bit stiffer, because every time I go to use it, the bloody thing's like this in my bag and uh, of course the battery's long since dead, so I'll always keep two 9 volt batteries.